general, a Moondis and the Togekiss, so a well, uh, more common uh, core as what we know, the composition overall that we've been seeing over time. And from uh, Yalmar's side, we're going to be seeing that Hatterene, female Ndidi, Torkoal, Venusaur, Dragapult, and the Colossal. Yeah, so, you know, Alex Sporting, as you said, something a little bit more uh, balanced and something that we've seen uh, time and time again, and, and definitely something that Alex is known for piloting very well. Um, but Yalmar is going to have something that uh, is a little bit more double-ended. So he's got that Torkoal Venusaur combination, uh, got that Hatterene and Didi combination to set up the Trick Room. Uh, we've also got that Dragapult Colossal uh, with potential Surf shenanigans uh, going on as well. So uh, we've got something from Yalma that's a bit more explosive and yeah. uh, really it's going to be down to Alex to decide how he's going to um, navigate, let's say, around all of those different combinations of Pokemon, all of those really aggressive, um, explosive strategies that Yalma has uh, as an option for him. Um, yeah. And really it's going to be down to Yalma to execute what he needs to execute and choose which one of those strategies he wants to go down and make sure he nails it. Oh, 100%. And let's hope for himself he's going to go ahead and do that. Um, he is going to be going ahead and bring that female in DD and the Venusaur. Whilst on Alex's side, we are going to be seeing that Tyranitar and the Incineroar. The Incineroar will begin the Intimidate off. It will not be having any effect on the opposing Pokemon side. And the Tyranitar will get its Sandstorm going thanks to its Sandstream ability. Yeah, and Psychic Surge there coming out from the female in Didi. Uh, so no Trick Room opportunity there for Yalma, but uh, certainly a Follow Me opportunity. Uh, of course, Psychic Terrain does stop priority moves like Fake Out coming out from that Incineroar, so not going to be able to do too much uh, to stop either in Didi or Venusaur going for any attacks. Uh, Ndidi does get access to Expanding Force, a fairly new move now with the uh, Isle of Armor DLC uh, that's come out and doesn't have any effect on Tyranitar or Incineroar, but potentially would on the Pokemon in the back. Uh, but yeah. there is always the risk of this Torkoal coming out from Yalma, so the field coming in to set up that sun would reduce Tyranitar's defense, not getting the boost from the sand. <laughs> um, and maybe we'll see a straight up G-Max Vine Lash coming out from Tyranitar, uh, from that Venusaur. That could definitely be the case right now, as we do see the Tyranta switch up for the Togekiss this time round, and that Dynamax is being procced on uh, Yelmo's side. It probably will be the Venusaur, like you said, Ben, because, I mean, I've not seen female in DD Dynamax that often. <laughs> um, although I have seen her once, to be fair, but uh, that G-Max uh, Venusaur will be coming out right now. It will be threatening huge amounts of damage, but if it is into that uh, Tyranta slot, it won't be dealing as Ooh. much since it is uh, going to be resisting it, but the helping hand does come out from the female indeed he wants to go for pure damage goes for max quake does this go into the incineral it does does it pick up the ko it does as well <laughs> one hit ko ladies and gents from that mean looking venusaur on yelma's side he doesn't want he's not playing around right now he just wants to get straight to business boost his special defense uh the venusaurs and the female indeedies by one stage as well as we see a life orb uh, recoil reveal on that venusaur too beautiful beautiful turn there from yalmar and uh, speaking about executing your strategy well uh, yeah that's that's one way to do it uh, <laughs> making sure that you are uh, attacking into the right to uh, right pokemon and alex of course switching his Togekiss in to make sure he could take a Grass-type attack from that G-Max Venusaur. Uh, yeah. Togekiss didn't have to take that attack, unfortunately for Alex. Uh, it was into the Incineroar, so... Ah, brilliant. No damage. Uh, one Pokémon knocked out. Um, yeah. So, really, Alex is now going to have to really utilize Togekiss and his Excadrill and Tyranitar as well mm -hmm. as he can. So, you know, questions like, does the Togekiss go for a follow me? Or does it maybe, if it has access to protect, does it protect mm -hmm. itself from a max ooze? Is mm -hmm. the Excadrill able to do enough damage to the Venusaur um, mm -hmm. to get it in range of any big attacks um, before it gets knocked out itself? Lots of questions. We're going to be answering <laughs> some of them soon as Tyranitar <laughs> comes in for the Togekiss.
It does indeed, and Alex is going to decide to go ahead and get his Dynamax on uh, by growing and growing that extra drill on his side. He will be trying to pick up a KO and get some probably special defense boost. If he did opt to go for that max quake right now, he does have the sand, mm. so he more than definitely, of course, will outspeed if, for example, this is an adamant extra drill, and that is a timid Venusaur. But we are going to be seeing the female indeed go for Follow Me on Yelma's side, wants to divert all the attention to itself uh which it does divert that match quake which does go into it doesn't pick up the ko it Ooh. doesn't this is a very very bulky indeedy or a very mm. weak extra drill very very well played very interesting there too um the extra does get a special defense boost both for itself and its ally the tyranta which does accept a max ooze with ease from that venusaur the venusaur will be able to boost its special attack as well as female indeedy's a special attack by one stage um um, but it won't be dealing as much damage as it would have liked. But then again, Yelma could potentially have some in the back. Uh, definitely, uh, definitely some uh, Pokemon in the back there for Yelma to take advantage of. And, uh, you know, that uh, Max Zoo's going into Tyranitar may be not super effective now, but uh, there's definitely potential of a super effective attack coming later. And being the last turn of uh, Gigantamax for Venusaur, I would expect to see a G-Max Vine Lash coming out, uh, getting yeah. that residual damage off onto Tyranitar, Excadrill, and Togekiss in the back as, it, as they're on the field. Uh, of course, Indeedy being able to survive that uh, Max Quake is absolutely fantastic for Yalmar. Um, going to be able to redirect any attack from Excadrill back into it. And that Tyranitar is really hanging out there uh, and deciding it doesn't want to hang out any longer and switching straight back out into Togekiss. <laughs> Yeah, so that's a that would be the prediction of the GMAX Vine Lash going into that Tyranta slot, which he tried to opt for. We did see the helping hand come out from the Indeedy into the Venusaur. No redirection, but no redirection needed since that extra drill does go and pick up the KO against that female Indeedy. Does want to try to get rid of all of that uh, redirection or just general support that has been so crucial uh, for Yelma's side. As the Venusaur will be going ahead and get that GMAX Vine Lash. Does it go into the extra drill? No, it does go into the pre previously Tyranitar slot, which is now the Togekiss, it still deals huge amounts of damage. Mm. <laughs> that is mm. a Pokemon that is known to be very bulky as well as resist grass types. So very, very impressive indeed. And we are going to be seeing the residual damage of both the Sandstorm and the Vine Lash effect nearly picking up the KO on the Togekiss, but just missing out. Does so, so, so much damage. And every time I see that move coming out, I'm like, oh, this is going to hurt. This is going to hurt for a long, long time. Um, yeah. Yeah, that Togekiss, not uh, not in the best position. Uh, really interesting that we saw the Follow Me not coming out from the Indeedy on uh, Yalmo's side of the field, opting to go for that helping hand, making sure as much damage was coming out as possible. Uh, maybe yeah. making sure there was enough chip damage through a, pot a potential protect from uh, Tyranitar and just making sure that damage bled through as much as possible. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe also wanting to have that Indeedy stay around onto the field, maybe thinking that the extra would target into the Venusaur, not knock it out, and then there's another follow me turn uh, once Venusaur is back into its normal form. But Dragapult coming out here is going to be uh, definitely pressuring the Togekiss, and since it moves before the uh, Venusaur, certainly, I'm going to make sure that that Venusaur can launch its Grass-type attacks if it wants to go for them into the Exodrill and if it can survive the turn as well. Um, yeah. So a real mixed bag here coming out, but Exodrill just going straight on the offensive with that Max Quake. It goes for the offensive and it picks up that KO onto the Venusaur with that Max Quake, further boosting its special defense as well as Toad Kisses. Uh, but of course, Toad Kisses at a such a small amount, it does not matter. It's more most important for this extra drill, which hasn't revealed Life Orb yet. As we do see the Dragapult go for the Reflect, so it will be boosting its defense, the, the its sides, the, its teammates, and itself's defenses. As um, that's not going to help, uh, <laughs> given the fact that that Toad Kiss was able to get a critical hit a dazzling gleam onto the Dragapult, bring it down to its Focus Sash, but the Focus Sash does not matter um, as the Dragapult will be going down to sand. So maybe Yelmar was thinking, as long as I can try to get a Reflect up and it could do its job, the Dragapult that is, I will be in a good spot, but it all depends on what the last Pokemon is mm. behind for Yelmar. 
Uh, you know, I've got a feeling it's that Torkoal in the back, and if that's the case, uh, Torkoal is known to have uh, moves like Body Press, uh, can also get access to Yawn, um, which we've seen before. So, uh, you know, this could be, this could be depending on how the uh, Torkoal is trained, uh, yeah. quite an interesting end game. Of course, that Excadrill is now going back into its normal form, as you're seeing on the screen there, and uh, that means that if it doesn't have access to high horsepower and instead mm -hmm. it only has Earthquake, uh, every time that the Excadrill attacks, it's going to be threatening damage on the his Tyranitar next to it. So, yeah, yeah, it's not quite as clear cut as an end game as it could be. No, given the fact that that Reflect did go up as well, so Dragon Ball was able to do its job there as it did go down, unfortunately, to the sand. So it'll be really interesting to see if this Torkoal can actually 2v1 a sand core that we're so used to seeing in that mm. Tyranitar and Extra Drill. Because, I mean, it all depends on the set, just like you said, Ben. So if it has, like, Body Press, Yawn, maybe a Protect, maybe it could do something, but it's still not looking the best for Yelma. But let's find out, shall we? Oh, there is... There is no high horsepower, at least revealed. Earthquake does come out, nearly picks up the KO on Alex's own Tyranitar, but does proc that weakness policy, which does boost that Tyranitar's attack and special attack. But, <coughs> pardon me, by two stages, we got far too excited. As the, the lash out combination revealed should be picking up. Oh, does not actually pick up the KO. No. That, wow, burning, burning jealousy does come out. Doesn't pick up the KO Ooh. on either Pokemon, but it does burn that Tyranta. That Tyranta might go down to a burn right now. It definitely will because the G-Max Vine Lash uh, residual damage will be taking it down first. But what a turn of events of this Torkoal. I mean, you kind of expected maybe if the extra job didn't have high horsepower, it would go for that Earthquake. But it was like a solid strat, but at the same time, it just dealt so much damage. But I think x is just going to be picking up the game now, isn't it? Uh, I think it is, and uh, maybe Torkoal could get a couple of protects here. I think we still have two more turns of uh, Ferocious Beating coming up and that G-Max Vine Lash. Yeah. Um, so, you know, there is a, there is still an opportunity for Yalmar if uh, if we've been able to count correctly um, for the Excadrill to be going down in the next Ooh. turn. Um, so, yeah, looks looks like that's not going to be the case. Uh, but, hey, let's, let's see if... Uh, yeah, that Excadrill's just going yeah. straight for the Earthquake. No no attempted protection from the Torkoal. And that'll be the game for Alex. That will be the game for Alex. What a turn of events. I felt like at some point, like, Yelma was able to just dominate during that beginning of the game there. And mm. um, he was able to utilize and wait to the last turn of the Gigantamax Venusaur to go ahead and get that Vine Lash going. It was into the Tokus, but remember, it dealt so much damage at plus one with that Venusaur. Um, but... I, think, I feel like if there was one more turn, like you said, Ben, that double protect would have been the opportunity, but it's just that Alex was able to Dynamax later and go ahead and just try to utilize his sand core, which didn't look like it was going to get stopped at that point, given the remaining Pokemon on Yama's side. Yeah, and quite fortunate, really, that the Tyranitar wasn't knocked out by the Earthquake. Uh, certainly, certainly one of the things that, you know, I, I think is a testament to Alex's play that he always knows his calculations as to how much damage things does, and he knew that that was the right thing to do. Yeah. I mean, it kind of makes sense because you are getting that additional damage because let's remember, that Lash Out does get its base power doubled when there's any sort of... Is it stat drops or is it only stat... It's stats, it's stat drops, but it was doubled by the weakness policy, so... It was, yeah, that's what I mean, yeah. So it's any stat... Uh, oh, it was boosted, yeah, of course. So either way, it was able to deal so much uh, damage, of course, onto the Torkoal, which is more than known to be so strong in its physical defense, as well as the fact that that Dragapult did get that ref Reflect off as well. It did, and you know, I I really did think that the reflect was going to do uh, a little bit more than it did. Uh, reflect is a move that is less effective when you have two Pokemon in the field, but it does go to its full effectiveness, i.e., halving the amount of damage that your Pokemon uh, takes from physical attacks when there's only one Pokemon on the field. So I did yeah. think, oh, maybe maybe there's an opportunity there for that interaction to happen, but uh, not quite enough gas in the tank, let's say, uh, for that Torkoal. Um, but we are going into game two now, so uh, let's see how these players have adapted going into turn one. 
Yeah, definitely. I'm curious to see if Yelmar's gonna try to go ahead and change up his strategy. Maybe go with a more of a trick room mode, unless uh, he does opt for that Venusaur again, which did prove to be so strong. And we do see it once again come onto the field for game two, accompanied by the Torkoal. Whilst on Alex's side, he's just gonna go for the straight up raw extra drill and Togekiss leave. Yeah, extra drill Togekiss is something that, you know, we saw right to the early series sort of one and two of BGC 2020. Um, but Torko Venusaur, fairly new, especially with Venusaur getting its Gigantamax form, and uh, those interactions are quite interesting. Again, we've got the follow me shenanigans, we've got the uh, option for Togekiss to just straight up go into the Tyranitar on Alex's side of the field, uh, activate the Sand Rush on uh, Excadrill, maybe launch a Max Quake straight into the Torko slot, try to remove that sun from the field. Uh, sooner yeah. rather than later and remove the effectiveness of Venus or at least uh, stop it from being able to hit first so you know again what does Venusaur go for does it go for a Max Ooze or does it go for a G-Max Vine Lash straight off the bat Ooh, but we're actually going to see the extra drill switch out and not the Toad Kiss for the Tyranta. Very interesting play from Alex's side. And uh, the Torkoal decides to switch out as well, anticipating that uh, Tyranta wanting to change up the weather and does bring in that female Indeedee, which of course does get the Psych Terrain up and going thanks to its Psychic Surge ability. So it will be interesting to see if there's going to be a double Dynamax coming out this turn round. But we are going to actually see the Dynamax come out from Alex's side, which is going to be the target kiss so maybe trying to opt for some max mm. airstreams in this case as well trying to get that boost of speed going for itself it should be trying to target down the venusaur now given the state of play of what uh, changes uh, Alex made to his adaptations, but no, it's Ooh. gonna get stopped by a sleep powder, <laughs> which does Ooh. land and outspeed that Togekiss big oofs, uh, given the fact that sleep powder did, uh, if there's no boosting item, of course, on that Venusaur, which we have seen before, it has life form, so it has three-fourths of a chance to land. It does indeed, and now Tyranitar's on the field must be, uh, uh, maybe slightly a little bit scared of that uh, Venusaur going for its Gigantamax form. We've seen the Helping Hand already coming out from the Indeedee in Game 1, and so, you know, you've got a real risk there to Tyranitar while Togekiss decided to take a nap. And, of course, depending on how long this Togekiss stays asleep depends on how long or how, how much um, Alex is going to be, let's say, not utilizing his Dynamax to its fullest potential. Yeah. Um, so really great turn there for Yalmar. And again, we're seeing, you know, Yalmar going in for the early game and really doing a lot of work. Question is, is will he be able to keep it up this time and convert that early game advantage into a winning end game? Oh, exactly. We're going to see the Tyranta switch out this time around for the Incineroar. Maybe trying to anticipate a G-Max Vine Lash going into that slot. Um, and we are going to be seeing the Dynamax go ahead and uh, get started with that gi uh, Gigantamax Venusaur on Yalmar's side. He will be either trying to go for special attack boosts, maybe some Max, max Quakes, but it, it, you're not sure. Probably he wants to try to get the G-Max Vine Lash uh, into the Tyranta unless he's just opting for those special attack boosts as we do see the indeedy go for the follow me uh but the g-max vine lash does come out it does go into that now incineral slot <laughs> so very good switch out from alex there just trying to slow him down a bit he's gonna be hoping to get this hope to wake up but he does not so second turn of dynamax wasted on alex's side thanks to that cheeky sleep powder which of course did land it did <laughs> That G Max Vine Lash just does too much damage. I mean, look at look at that. Look at the look at the damage it did, and then look at the extra damage it does from the from the ferocious beating afterwards. That Incineroar took over fifty percent from yeah. one attack, not even helping hand boosted and being resisted as well. That's just that's just not fair. It's just not fair, Costa. <laughs> it's um, not fair. But going back going back to the game, um, we've got the opportunity here for. Um, Venusaur to really start boosting itself up, going for that um, Max Ooze now. Uh, we've had Togekiss take two ticks of sleep, so it is really quite likely to start waking up now. I mm -hmm. think that, you know, 
Yama needs to take advantage of that and make sure he does get his attacks off, get that Max Ooze out. Uh, he's always got the switch in to Torkoal to raise the speed later. So, you know, take advantage of the what he can get at the moment and try and get that, that special attack boosted. Oh, the follow me does come out, but more importantly, the Toad Gifts is asleep yet again as it does get attacked by this Max Ooze uh, from the Venusaur. Being able to boost its special attack as well as the Indeedees, but it just dealt a lot of damage there. Just goes to show you the power of the Life Orb set as well. As the uh, Incineroar does go for the Flare Blitz, of course, it gets redirected into that female Indeedee and does not pick up a KO at all. This female Indeedee is very, very bulky. And unfortunately, that Toad Kiss is going to lose its Dynamax and it wasn't even able to get one Dynamax move off unfortunately for Alex's side. Absolutely and, and that's really fortunate for Yalma but uh, that's sometimes the way that these games go so it's going back into its normal form and of course Venusaur having that one turn of Gigantamax left so can go for another Max Ooze if it wants to can go for a Max Quake to get that special defense boost going um, indeed he's still on the field means that uh, Yama has the opportunity to keep that Venusaur safe for one more turn and one more turn is really all that he needs uh, to put himself in a great position either the Togekiss gets knocked out from a uh, Max Ooze, maybe even a G-Max Vine Lash if he wants to cover the switch into Tyranitar or Excadrill in the back. And of course, yeah, um, there's not a lot of maneuverability that uh, that uh, Alex has at this stage of the game. Yeah. I think Alex is maybe just trying to hope to get his sand caught in. But uh, the Togekiss does decide to finally wake up, but also miss the Indeedee with a heat wave. It does land on the Venusaur, does deal a critical hit, dealing huge amounts of damage as the G-Max Vine Lash does come out from the Venusaur, wants to go Ooh. into the Incineroar slot, actually, mm. and pick up maybe an ante anticipating a switch in and just wanting to be safe because um, Yama knew that <laughs> the power of the Venusaur as Expanding Force does come from the female Ndidi and does pick up the KO on the Toad Kiss. So Alex is going to be at a 4-2 to two deficit, but at the same time, he's going to be getting his sand core in. Well, he is going to be getting his sand core. The question is, is how long that sand core is going to last yeah. um, with Torkoal in the back. And of course, you know, uh, there's, there's Sleep Powder shenanigans going on. Um, there's, depending on what move of choice, uh, Yama's gone for whether it's Frenzy Plant on Venusaur or Leaf Storm uh, will depend on how he's able to, um, you know, freely or not so freely use his grass moves of choice. Yeah. Um, of course, that indeed he's still on the field, but we with the follow me, but we did see the earthquake come out from Excadrill. Um, so, you know, there's a there's a real mix of things that can happen, and uh, we did see the GMAX Vine Lash go off on the first turn of uh, Venusaur's. Uh, Gigantamax, so there is one more turn of Ferocious Beating left uh, for Alex to be able to take, so that last bit of chip damage um, will definitely make sure that both Excadrill and Tyranitar are sort of sitting a little bit lower than maybe they'd like to going into the, the final few turns of the game. Yeah, I think it's a very delicate situation. It just all depends on what moves will be coming out from either trainer as well as how it's going to be playing out because Sand could just come in straight now, but no, the Venusaur actually switches out for the Dragapult, not what you'd expect to see switch out. And um, the Protect does come out from the extra drill over on Alex's end, just wants to be able to uh, keep it a bit safe as uh, Yama had the same thought for his Indeedee and uh, once again for himself does try to go for that protect um whilst the rock slide does come out from the tyranta will be only dealing damage on this dragapult but that is some good damage as the sandstorm does now subside so there's no longer weather and there's no longer any sand rush that uh the extra drill will be able to take advantage of as the G-Max Vine Lash Ferocious Beating does actually it should be ending that turn I believe but then I could be wrong but it does break a potential focus sash on the extra drill it, it does indeed and uh, yeah this Dragapult now going to be the fastest thing on the field and really good timing there from Yelma because we saw the Reflect in the previous game and uh, Reflect may be the move of choice here coming from the Dragapult maybe trying to uh, slow down the game a little bit just make sure that uh, Yama is able to take those attacks with Torkoal and uh, Venusaur when it eventually comes back in um, yeah. in combination and maybe 
trying to uh, have Indeedy and um, Dragapult not on the field um, and maybe be knocked out at the same time so that Venusaur and Torkoal can come onto the field clean. Yeah, as Indeedy does go for Follow Me, and the Dragapult goes for a Reflect, tries to boost the defense of all of its teammates for a few turns, as the Extra Drill actually reveals that Swords Dance and goes for it there, does boost its attack by two stages, as the Tyranitar as well just opts to go for that Rock Slide, deal a bit more damage over time onto both the Dragapult and Indeedy, which it definitely lands. It does, and, and the big question here is, you know, we've seen Swords Dance... Uh, the extra draw must have a steel move. It almost, almost always does. We've seen the sword stance now. Uh, yeah. If it doesn't have a way of protecting itself, um, you know, maybe we'll see we'll see another another coverage move like rock slide. But uh, likelihood is that earthquake is the only ground type move or attack of choice, uh, and certainly the only attack that's going to uh, hit both uh, opponents' Pokemon. So, yeah, yeah, a little bit of a, a, a toss up now that the sword stance is up in the field. That Tyranitar is definitely not going to appreciate it next to Alex's ex girl. Indeed, he goes once again for that follow me, and the Dragapult now decides to attack, does go for that Dragon Dart, will be able to deal uh, a good chip damage onto Extra Drill, which actually, of course, resists it, as well as onto the Tyranta. Extra Drill does opt to go for that Iron Head, picks up the KO onto that Indeedy, allowing this Tyranta to be able to uh, take out this Dragapult as well, bringing the game back to two versus two, sand versus sun. The sun will be going up if it is that Torkoal in the back. Um, oh, of course, it is the Torkoal in the back. We saw it as a lead with the Venusaur. So it all depends right now, um, Ben, because the Venusaur doesn't have that much H HP, does it? Yeah. No, it doesn't have that much HP, but of course, you know, there's no way for that Excadrill to activate Tyranitar's weakness policy this time. Reflect is still in play. So, you know, Venusaur is going to get one attack off. Mm. Uh, if that attack goes into the Excadrill, uh, maybe goes into a Protect, the Torkoal could follow up with a something like a Body Press. Um, we could see, you know, maybe a little bit of Rock Slide flinching going on, but I don't think Rock Slide would be able to pick up the knockout on the Venusaur from this range. Uh, certainly mm. not with Reflect in play. So, Really, it's down to Alex to um, decide whether he's going to protect or not on the Excadrill um, and whether he's confident enough that Venusaur is going to be definitely knocked out by any of Tyranitar's attacks. You know, or does he does he reconcile that the Tyranitar is going to get uh, attacked this turn? It, it's really hard to say, but uh, this time Excadrill's going for a protect, so we'll see where that Venusaur is targeting. Ooh, very good protect. That Venusaur did try to go for that Earth Power into the Extra Drill, failing, of course, as the Lash Up comes out from the Tyranitar, picks up the KO onto the Venusaur. This could be game-changing right now, depending on what the Sword Call has or doesn't. It has Body Press, it reveals it, it picks up the KO onto the Tyranitar, <laughs> leaving yeah. a one versus one between this Extra Drill and the Torkoal. What a final countdown moment of this game. Torkoal is such an interesting Pokemon in this format. It's turned from a Pokemon that uh, can be a bit of a liability to something that really can grind out to the end of a game. Uh, that Earthquake coming up from the Excadrill oh! is going to be at full power, though. Uh, super effective, and the Torkoal is going to be knocked out in one. Uh, that is the game to Alex, game two to Alex. And in fact, Alex does take this set for Spain. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> what was that moment at the end? I mean... Oh, wow. Okay. It, it's just like we said, right? Um, it all depends on how it plays out. Mm -hmm. Yelma had the advantage, didn't he? He had the advantage throughout. Yeah. He played really yeah. well. He had the sun mode that he wanted behind a reflect in game two. So he was in a situation where he thought, okay, at least I, I'm in control. I've got a slight advantage. I've got a bit more tempo uh, control over the ball yeah. position. But um Alex was just able to run away there he, with it. He was able to go ahead, get the Swords Dance up, choose and call the correct Protect against that Venusaur, because the Venusaur could have just gone into the Tyranta, picked up 